Welcome back to Check Your Mic Podcast. Today we have joining us Queenie and also Cody. Um, not my bag, aka. Um, so Queenie, this is your first time here. Um, this is my first time. This is the second. You've recorded with us um, before. Yeah, with some um, hygiene. Unless we weren't recording. No, we weren't recording. Oh, that was just a meeting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How old are you? Uh, where are you from? I'm an age. I'm not jailbait. Well, there you go. We know that she, well, in America, she is older than 18. Perfect. Um, I'm from, I'm from Minnesota, but I live in New York. New York. Very cool. What's it? So how long did you, did you live in Minnesota for? Um, that would actually give away my age all of my life. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, more than 15, more than 18 years. How about that? There you go. Um, okay. So this is a question for both, for everyone. So do you prefer no hot sauce, mild, medium, or hot on stuff that you use hot sauce with i guess or sauce i i prefer mild um i used to be in no hot sauce but then it wasn't like enough for me and so now i use a lot of mild sauce with when i eat burritos and things like that mm -hmm. yeah i actually haven't when I went to the store to get some hot sauce, their hot sauce isn't really hot, so I had to end up getting sriracha. Oh. Yeah, the type of hot, like, when I make my eggs, I put paprika, uh, chili powder, chili, uh, yeah, chili pe powder. I put hot sauce in my eggs when, I, when I'm whisking. Well, I've never had so any like, type of heat with my black eggs. Black pepper. Like when you when you know you're like mixing ingredients mm -hmm. and you're seasoning the eggs. I don't know if you season your eggs. I don't know, um, not personally anyway. But like when I make my eggs, I, I prefer scrambled. Gotcha. Best. But when I'm making my eggs, I put black pepper, lemon pepper, uh, salt, paprika chili powder and sriracha and then i whisk it nice and uh dustin or not dustin dustin's not here that's something dead to us. dustin is dead to us sonic is dead to us cody 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 do you prefer no sauce, mild sauce, medium, or hot? Oh, uh, oh god. It's gotta be hot, but not like terribly hot, but like, you know, I guess medium. Medium? Nice. Yeah, medium safe. That's a safe answer. Okay. I don't know. I, it's, why not, why not hot? Like, why not terribly hot, actually? <laughs> It hurts. I don't know. It's pain. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. <laughs> I like to rub my eyes a lot and scratch my balls, oh. and I don't want to have to be worried about, like, oh, man, I can't scratch here. Or, yeah, that you know, was, burn when for I days. was eating some habaneros, that was the downside. I accidentally rubbed my eyes. Oh, um, no. Yeah. Um, my boyfriend and I, uh, well, my fiance, my fiance at the time, we had to uh, go to the hospital. Dang. Y'all are crazy. I've had habaneros twice, and that was because I was trying to prove a point. But I mean, he also tried that, and then he ended up scratching his balls. Oh no! Did so it we hurt? were, I we both had to go to the hospital. Oh my freaking word! You poor things. Um, I mean, like I mean, I was pretty much not really blind. But I may as well have been. I could not <laughs> open my eyes. Jeez. I remember... He was the driver. The two times I ever ate a habanero, the first time was fine. Like, nothing. It was like nothing. I was like, wow, that was really, like, 
I'm actually upset that it wasn't hot. And then the second time I had it, it was terrible. So I, mean, I think it was just the amount of seeds that were in them. That too, and it's fresh mint. Fresh mint. Yeah. Makes sense. All right. Enough for introductions. Let's move on to our questions. So first question of today is, how did you first get introduced to anime? And I will answer that. Um, and then I'll allow you guys to kind of think of your answers as I go along. But I was first introduced to anime through probably cartoons. Um, just in general, I watched like Cartoon Network. And then um, Toonami was on TV. I don't know if you guys ever watched Toonami. But Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. Um, it had Naruto on there. Um, my brother was the big anime guy, um, my older brother, and uh, we would just, he was watching TV, and we would, my whole, I have like four bro- four sisters and one brother, and we were all just in there watching TV, and that was on, and he was watching it, and so we watched it, and I was like, this is really legit, this is really cool, these are like cooler, more like cartoons for older people, I thought, that's what I thought it was, I didn't, I had at the time, I had no idea that it was anime, um, but that was kind of my first introduction to anime, and that's when I realized that I really, really enjoyed anime. I I can't say I really ever enjoyed, like, real people shows as much as I enjoyed um, animated stuff. Um, not to say that I don't like um, IRL shows, but I do prefer anime over IRL. So, yeah, just watching with my brothers and sisters on Toonami. Cartoons is where it started, and then I found better cartoons that were anime. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, well, when I got into anime, I was already into manga. Mm-hmm. Um, I flew through those. Oh, wow. Like, uh, like um, what's it like? Chain smokers fly through cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> But I actually didn't get into anime until I got into college, temp- well, I was at least in college temporarily. And I had asked people, I was asking around, like, what's a good anime to start out with? Mm-hmm. Um, and an acquaintance was like, Boku no Pico. I was like, oh, okay. Um, what is that? And your mind was blown at the quality of content that you watched. Don't, I'm just saying, do not watch it. Uh, oh, okay. I, I, <laughs> I did have, I do have the thing at least finishing the episode. Um, Boku no Pico is just ovas, so they're just. Oh, um, I thought you said Boku no Pito. I was like, I haven't yeah. heard of that one. Boku no Pico. Oh, okay. Um, but, How do you yeah. spell that? Boku, B O K U, no Pico. So the word no, and then Pico, P I K O. It's okay, a shot. watch it now. It's a shot of con. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's essentially, uh, what's the word? Actually, you know what? I don't even think I can say that. Yeah, let's um, let's keep it as family friendly as possible. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a shotacon. If you know what a shotacon is, you know what a shotacon is. Gotcha. Um, um, but yeah, I at least finished out the episode, but that that was dropped immediately. Jeez, what a terrible first intro. Yes, like you know what? I know I realize it's um it's mainstream, but I'm gonna just start with Naruto. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I honestly probably should have just started out with it to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you like that? Ah, uh, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it enough to rewatch it quite a few times. Wow. Did you watch all the way through Boruto? Boruto doesn't exist it's not even canon (laughs) yeah i did i couldn't even finish shipping in so i think i watched like the first i watched the intro music and then like five ten minutes i was like uh no like i got my i got time to spend doing other things yeah at that point i would honestly rather watch all of one piece oh boy (laughs) that bad huh yeah. Jeez. I can't do 300 episode animes. <laughs> <laughs> just... 
we talked about on the last one how I how I preferred shorter anime just because it's easier to digest digest for me. Um, just too much. Uh, what's the word? Commitment for longer ones. Mm. Unless I'm watching them with someone, then it's different. But if I'm watching them by myself, then I just want to watch them and then get them get through it. But I can't do that with longer ones. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, uh, Cody? What was your first introduction to anime? I mean, I watched Toonami, um, but I think I used to stay up late playing Pokemon, mm -hmm. and uh, Adult Swim would come on, and I'd watch, like, uh, they had Outlaw Star there at the time, and then... Um, oh, I, I remember them having Inuyasha. I love that. And, I love that. Inuyasha and Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho was bomb dude i love oh, that yeah. you know it, it actually Did kind of holds up yu yu Hakusho was adult swim yeah was really? it really yeah oh dang and i was watching yeah. stuff on adult swim don't tell my parents <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't seem like it was it i mean he says he cusses gotcha he, he has cuss words okay now that I think of it, I think Naruto possibly could have been on Adult Swim too. Yeah. I don't remember. So, um, let's go into the second question. Yeah, totally, you know what? I don't know if you've ever, if y'all have ever heard of it. I know some of my friends. They don't want to. They don't watch it. They they don't. Um, they don't recognize it as anime because it's not Japanese. Um, Kwanji Gaoshu. It's a good anime. It's just, it's Chinese. Um, oh. It's, it's English name is The King's Avatar. I have not heard uh, of that. It's an anime that got a few of my friends into MMOs. Because it's an, essentially, it's just an MMO, but. Gotcha. Dot hack. Anime. Dot hack? heard of that the original sword art mm. yeah mm -hmm. the sword art before sword art mm -hmm. we uh, we actually have the we actually have one of the games so for the ps4 it might be i let's see it's really actually no sword art um released before it did it really? Yeah, by a whole uh, five years. No way. The original dot hack. Oh, dot hack. Never mind. I'm thinking. I thought y'all. No, no, no. Not that. Not that. Okay. Okay. I was like, what? <laughs> like, I remember it being like a decade before. <laughs> I was like, wow. That they must just have really bad animation, I guess, because it looks really old. <laughs> yeah. I don't. You know what? Wikipedia is not giving me. Uh, oh, it says two thousand five. Uh, dot hack. I thought it was two thousand two. I'm not really sure. I. It might be. It launched in two thousand two. Yep. Yeah. Well, there you go. Are we ready for the second question? Yeah. Cool. So, how were you first introduced to Magic the Gathering? So, me personally, I was introduced to Magic the Gathering. Um, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! growing up, right? Um, mm -hmm. Didn't like Pokemon, because I didn't really try it. And I thought it was just too popular. And then Yu-Gi-Oh! I was like, I watched the show on, on uh, Toonami, Cartoon Network, whatever it was on. Um, and then uh, found out that you could actually play the card game. And I was like... This is super cool. I played the card game, um, started doing tournaments at my local game shop, and I went in to buy cards, and there were some people playing Magic the Gathering on one, at one of the tables, and I walked over there and asked if I could watch, because I was like, well, I haven't given this a chance. I wonder what, what it's like, and it seemed pretty interesting. It seemed really complicated. I was probably 16 at the time, and... Um, I was, like, looking for some... At this point, Yu-Gi-Oh! was... 
I was looking for some more uh, complicated strategy. Um, and Yu-Gi-Oh just wasn't doing it for me. And I asked them if they had any cards that they could give me that they didn't want. Like, I didn't care what they gave me. Like, if they could just give me anything just to start with. And so they gave me a few cards, and the shop owner came over, and he was like, Hey, we have these beginner decks that you can choose from for free if you want to start playing. And I was like, heck yeah. And so they got gave me a deck, and I ended up learning right then and there. Sat there for a good hour and a half learning how to play Magic the Gathering, and it was actually a lot of fun. It was, a lo it was really hard. At first, I was, like, really stressed because I was like, this is a lot to take in all at once. But... The more that I played it, the it it just it got easier. I mean, just like most things um, that you do, and the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, but yeah, it was really cool to see little interactions, how things worked together and together. And uh, yeah, that was my first introduction to Magic: The Gathering. So okay, so kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh sort of led you to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I came across Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemon first. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! just seemed boring. I'm not boring. Pokemon seemed boring. Yu-Gi-Oh! Right. was just like, uh, I don't understand what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got into magic in the ninth grade. Oh, wow. Um... Yeah, that doesn't. Uh, in 2010, that doesn't really count with my age because I could just be an old. <laughs> but I started in set, uh, in Commander set 2010. Um, and my first two decks were Pop Tart decks, so I paid with them with a box of Pop Tarts. Wait, what? Yeah. Um, someone who was playing Magic for a while before me, I essentially paid for him to make me two decks using Pop-Tarts. Because we're in high school. What uh -huh. high school is like food. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So you're like, here's some Pop-Tarts, make me, make me Magic card decks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, and, I mean, because they were Pop-Tart decks, they were god-awful. <laughs> Um, one was big stompy creature, uh, green red, and then the other was mono blue, really bad control. Um, because of my interactions with those two particular decks, I hated the colors. Um, <laughs> and so, like later in life, when I had a job and could buy good cards, it's like, oh wait, these 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 colors aren't all that bad. Mm hmm. But That's yeah, funny. um, I didn't. I played mostly during, like, lunch. They had, like, their club, but I didn't have transportation, so I couldn't stay after. And then when I graduated from high school, actually, I switched high schools. And so I was just like, oh, I don't have anyone to play Magic with. Mm -hmm. So I just put them away in my closet back home. Um, yeah, and then I transferred high schools, was there, then didn't realize because I joined their anime club like super late in the year and there's there's other magic players what I <laughs> play, magic, play magic with people I mean I still had the decks I didn't take them apart mm -hmm. uh, but they were still awful compared to the decks I was playing against right um then I worked for I was a super senior for like three months then worked for a little bit and then the next year, I finally got to, or then at least the next semester, I finally got to start school. And when I got there, I was just like, I'm just going to go to class, do my work, finish so that I can graduate on time, and hmm. not talk to anybody. Like, I don't want to talk to you. Don't touch me. I'm sterile. <laughs> and then I came across the game, their game room. I was like, oh my gosh, they have TVs. People bring their consoles. People bring their whole computer and just plug it into a TV. That's crazy. That's where I had met my ex fiance and then my group of gaming buddies that we made our server <laughs> with. 
and then realized they played magic and I had a reason to get back into magic. Well, there you go. And then, yeah, uh, when I had started back up, I started with zombies. Because I was still mad at red, green, and blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I was like, I want to get a way to give my zombies flying. And they're like, you can in blue. It's like, hmm. hmm. <laughs> I, had actually, I had actually came across the card Wonder. And I was like, I have to dip into blue if I want to get Wonder. And that made my zombies better. Because there's more stuff to do. Yeah. You're not just having mono colors. The other thing, black didn't really deal with enchantments. Yeah. Um, and then I gotten. Then there was someone that came. He was just visiting, and he introduced me to stacks. And I went to, because I realized that uh, zombies are expensive, so <laughs> I went to enchantments. Real well before I got to enchantments, I moved to artifacts, and was like, this was a bad idea. Because artifacts are expensive. And then yep. when he introduced me to stacks, I was like, oh, not still terrible idea because enchantments are expensive. Yeah. Like, I'm just getting more and more expensive. What is <laughs> Yeah, and then Yeah. And then by the time when I decided I wanted to move to New York, like I still play magic on Cockatrice, but by that time I had over fifty thousand cards that I sadly could not bring with me. So I had to sell everything. Dang. Very sad times. Hopefully eventually when I can afford it, I can start rebuilding my collection. Yeah. Hmm. Um what about you, uh, Cody? What how are you are you said Did you already say yours? I can't remember. I didn't. No, I uh, I started. I started with Pokemon. Uh, me and my cousin got Pokemon cards. We thought this is pretty fun. Um, but like years later, I guess uh, I got bored. I had I was living at my mom's house with my little brother. I was like nineteen, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know. I just something was like they had those like dual decks at the time where you could get like the kind of the you know what I'm talking about. You'd buy like a dual deck. It had two decks in it, right? It kind of made yeah. to like oh, fight each yeah. other mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like be yeah, sort of even. Know. Yeah. So uh, I I bought I bought that, and then uh, I was like, you know, me and my little brother just started playing with that. We at first had basically butchered the rules. I mean, it was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> we weren't even playing magic, but we were doing the same things. You know, we had the same rules, so it, it worked out. But yeah, um, kind of as we got more into it, um, I don't know. I just kept running into people that that played magic and we just slowly over time became better and better at it and then you know once we discovered you could buy singles came like a big thing we mm -hmm. he spent like i think he spent like 800 dollars once Jeez. Like two, two months of his pay on like some singles for this deck that was like pretty okay it was a commander deck and at the time we hadn't commander hadn't super established itself like mm -hmm. it was kind of maybe like so he would just play his commander deck against our, you know, like I had a modern deck and, you know, we just like, he would just show up with the commander deck and play commander while we played modern. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. It was definitely like a cool, like interesting thing to do. Still yeah, like it. Also like, yeah, with the singles before, like I got into doing singles, I did packs and then realized that it, probably cheaper especially because i played a lot of commander at least my group plays a lot of commander and it's just like it's honestly if you know what you want in your deck cheaper to just get the singles yeah well depends <laughs> i mean unless you're omniscient and know that you're gonna get what you want <laughs> well, it's it, it depends on your creative process i think mine is like i get a box I open the box and I kind of go through it, sort everything, and then if anything kind of like strikes my fancy, mm. I think like, okay, what can I do with this commander or, you know, whatever. And then if I need a single that's just perfect for it, you know, like I think I recently mm. bought Conjurer's Closet because like I just, I needed it for mm -hmm. one of the decks. So I, but I definitely don't like, 
like I don't just like Google mm. a deck online and then buy all the singles, but I do go through my collection, find stuff, and then Hunter's I know there's Club singles Lit out there. Is the uh, artifact version of Venser Sojourner, right? Well, it is plus two. You exile um, a creature. You, you exile and it, it returns. Yeah. So you exile Sojourner. on end step, I think. Yeah, so Sojourner he exiles it and then it comes back on end step and then conjures club but you exile it on end step and it comes back yeah that's true i was doing it on carter's doom scourge so no one could ever attack me well there you go mm. <laughs> <laughs> all right y'all ready to open some magic gathering packs yeah. Oh. Make make yourself some money. <laughs> so, I have a couple of jumps right here. Um, Queenie requested that I open an Ikoria, and Cody requested that I open a Commander Legends. So I will open a uh, jump start for me first. It is um, Doctor. That's what it says on the front of it, on the front card. Oh, God. Don't know what that means, but... That's what the card says, or is that what the plastic says? Oh, no, no. The... So, the... have you done any research with uh, Jumpstart? Uh, no. Okay, so if you look, I'm sure my camera's on. Mm -hmm. So the card itself says Doctor. Hmm. So, right. like, I'm going to kind of hide, because the way that these show themselves, like, the way that they, the card itself, like, oh, it's okay. a card that says Doctor. Yeah, I don't really, I probably should look at spoilers. I don't really look at the spoilers. Um... Oh, at you my gosh. for not We're looking back. at spoilers. Welcome back. I I don't really like like I look at what cards like I'll look up what like a card ability and see if there's cards that fit that ability. There we go. Are you good? Yep. I had to okay. fix it. Okay. So we have secure the scene. I'm not going to go through the I'm just going to say what the commons are. I'm not really going to read into them too much. Revitalize, Anointed Chorister, Swift Response, Angel of Mercy, Moment of Heroism, Thriving Heath, Basri's uh, Acolyte, uh, a Acolyte. Bunch of Planes, Uh, we have for our uncommon slots Griffin Airy, Airy, I'm not sure how to say that. Light of Promise, Bright Mare, Stonehaven Pilgrim, and for our rare we have Speaker of the Heavens. Let's see if I can oh, get he's it. A, he's a good cleric. So my cleric stuck. Ooh. Well, he's probably not that good, but he's a cleric. That one cost, is... one one, human cleric, vigilance, lifelink. You can tap him to create a four four, white angel uh, creature token with flying. You can only activate that ability if you have at least seven uh, life more than your starting life total, and only any time you could cast a sorcery. So he's okay in my. Yeah. He's yeah. He's, he's, okay. he's good in my cleric deck, but my cleric deck is jank, so I mean... <laughs> Alright, now we can open the Ikoria for Queenie. Gotta get your camera going, buddy. <laughs> my camera? Oh, it might be turned off for me, hold on. I fixed it. Oh, okay. Yeah, my camera should be going, so... Ikoria commons we have one or of one mind lava serpent maned serval glimmer bell survivor's bond 
Unlikely Aid, Crustacean, Fire Prophecy, Savai Sabretooth, Migratory Great Horn, and for our uncommons, we have Void Beckoner, Will of the All Hunter, Savai Crystal, and for our rare, we have a Full Art. Sea Dasher Octopus. Oh. That looks nice. freaking cool. Yeah. I like the full art from the set. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a one blue blue uh, creature octopus. It's 2-2. Two, two. It has mutate for one colors and a blue. Flash. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. put that in a sleeve and also this other guy in a sleeve just because they're rares um i will get to another jump start and the commander legends pack um further in but what was the first video game you remember playing for me first game video game i remember playing was Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped on the PlayStation 1. That was probably the first ma or first video game like on a console that I remember playing. And I loved it. So it's probably my favorite PS1 game that I ever played. Um, and then I ended up playing the rest of the like Crash Bandicoot 2, um, Tag Team Racing on the PlayStation 2. Uh, there was another one. I forget what it was called. I played it. Um, I love the Crash Bandicoot series. I, it was a blast back then. So. Um. Well, I'm trying to think. I don't know which one actually. Oh, you know what? I remember our first console actually was the original NES. Um, I love Duck Hunt. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? It's like a mis uh, uh, like a whodunit type game. Gotcha. Um, Dig Dug was my <laughs> oh my gosh, I love Dig Dug. That actually might have. I feel like Mario was probably the first game that I played. Because that was our first console ever, and then we got a GameCube, and I just played the crap out of Smash. Smash was fun. I loved mm -hmm. I loved uh, Brawl on the Wii. Mm -hmm. Um, probably my favorite Wii game that I ever played. Yeah, personally. But, yeah, like favorite game for our, our our NES was the um was Dig Dug, and then. When we got our GameCube, favorite game was Smash. Mm -hmm. Even though I'm really bad at it. <laughs> well, I love it though. Yeah, I wasn't the greatest. Like I, obviously, with my brothers and sisters, I was pretty dang good. But then mm -hmm. when I went to college and started playing with other people, holy crap! Did I realize just how bad I was in comparison to some of those guys who just played all the time. Yeah, I, and I think a lot, because I had that problem when I went to college, um, a lot of them went to tournaments, and they just practiced, so they yeah. were just good. Yep. <laughs> it was it was always uh, me, uh, my roommate, and another person. We'd do, like, four players, and we'd, like, all have to team up on this guy just so that one of us could win, because <laughs> he was yeah. just that good. Like I, t I was told I was pretty good with um, original Smash, but yeah, when I got, what was that? When they came out with like, I never played, I played actually, you know what? I played Smash Ultimate once. Um, not really a big fan of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Mostly because they nerfed Marth. Gotcha. Uh, but what was the one on Wii? I'm trying to think of what the one on Wii was called.
can't think of what it's called. But, okay, well, the Smash on Wii, uh, I played that a lot. Yeah. At least at the college, because that's what everybody was playing. On occasion, people right. would bring in their Wiis and GameCubes and would play Brawl. Um, not actual Brawl on the Wii, it was um, modded Brawl. Gotcha. Because they don't have, like, Brawl or on the GameCube, right? Mm-mm. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we would play uh, original Smash on GameCube, Brawl on Wii, and then Super Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. yeah, Super Smash Bros. Um, no? Oh, not Wii. Wii U. That's what it was. Oh, gotcha. Uh, Super... Yeah, Super Smash Bros. Oh, sweet. Okay. Just trying to... Yeah, and then I recently got... I mean, I'm super into fighting games, even though I'm not the greatest. Yeah. The Dragon Ball uh, series of, game, of fighting games are a lot of fun. I played those growing up on, like, the PlayStation 2. Mm. Yeah. I did, like... Um... There was one of them. It you fought. I can't remember what it was called, but you fought Cell in it. Uh, it was a Dragon Ball game for PlayStation Two. Budokai. I need the Budokai. Budokai Tenkaichi. Yeah, yeah. It was the. I just don't remember which one it was. Yeah. That's fair. I have a terrible memory. Like I can't remember anything. And half the time, like, I I think I'm listening. And then they'll be like, did you hear me say this? And I was like, no. And everyone's like, yeah, they said that. And I was like, oh, oh. my bad. It was just the first one. Oh, gotcha. It was just Dragon Ball Super Budokai. Gotcha. I, and I remember we played through it. We were doing playthroughs of each, like, level. So, like, normal, easy, or, like, easy, normal, hard. And we got, we were playing the hardest. We got to the cell fight, and I think it was me, myself, my sister, and then two of our cousins. And we were just passing the controller between us every time somebody lost. <laughs> my cousin got so mad at me. He was actually he actually cried because I beat him. And he's like, "You just spammed one one ability. That's not fair." And he went and told his mom. It's like, "That's what you're crying <laughs> about." If you don't go away from me. Oh my goodness. Like, but yeah, he was so mad. It's like you spammed one ability. That is why you got the kill. <laughs> oh, cousins! It worked. Yeah, I mean, if if it works, it works, right? So, yeah. what about you, Cody? What was uh the first video game you remember playing? Oh, uh, mine. <laughs> I did play the Crash series on the PS One. Uh huh. Um. I had this, we had a PS1, but we couldn't really afford games, so I played a demo um, of a bunch of different games. Oh, like did you have Curator, one of those CDs that had, yeah. like, all the different video games on them? The demos? Yeah, like a bunch of different demos. Ah, I uh, see. Yeah, so I played a lot of those for a while, um, but I guess the first game I ever took seriously was probably, like, SOCOM. I don't know if you ever played SOCOM. What is that? I mean, it's a third-person shooter. Uh, build is, like, a tactical shooter. Um, and it came out, I don't know if it was right around the same time as Counter-Strike, but kind of the same concept, all the guns kill you kind of thing, except there's a, a third person camera and it, you could play it online on the PlayStation. Huh. Interesting. So, yeah. You had to buy like, I mean, the PS2 had that little modem adapter that you could buy and then you would play that game online. But I also played N64 GoldenEye back in the day. I've out. heard of that. Never played it, but I did hear about it. It was pretty it started popular. started the, the, oh my god, stop peeking at my screen revolution, where you had that co-op on the same screen, and <laughs> and you had the, in that game, you couldn't move and shoot, so like, it was a really big advantage to like screen peeking, because you could wait around the corner for someone to come around the corner. Yep, and, like, kill yep. Them. So. 
I remember the whole screen peaking problem for a lot of games, actually. Yeah. We used to have some fights about that. <laughs> yep, yep. You were looking at my screen. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I was looking at your screen earlier, figured out what direction you were probably going to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wasn't looking when I killed you. Yeah, but you're looking at it before. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. I remember that. Oh man. Um okay, let's uh let's talk about our favorite Magic the Gathering set and why it's our favorite. I don't know I don't think we talked about this yet before on the other episodes. Mm -hmm. Um I think my favorite set would have to be Theros. Um it's when I was starting to get serious about Magic the Gathering. Um, when they started introducing gods into cre in, as a creature type, I was like, oh my gosh, like, this is the most powerful, this is going to be the most powerful being in Magic the Gathering, and they're making them into cards, like, this is insane, and, uh, I just loved the, the whole idea behind it, and thought it was crazy, um, and got me super hyped into Magic, and, uh, yeah, now I have uh, Iron Iroas in my uh, Boros White Red Heroic Enchantment deck um, because I loved the idea of having gods and magic. So, okay. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think what set she come out. Um, I guess my favorite set was Commander 2018, uh, mostly because Estra dropped. Uh, the only downside, because, I mean, I was still playing enchantments, and at the time, I was trying to get a Greater Oromancer, uh, so downside, Greater Oromancer shot up, like, 30 bucks, so it's like, that's depression. Yep. <laughs> and I think it was, yeah. That's and fair. Then, and then, it kind of settled and then it dropped 30 bucks it's like ooh, and then it drops some more and i was like hmm. i still couldn't buy it because bills and whatnot yeah but like some friends they bought actually a few greater oromancers because some people just have money yeah i hate those people <laughs> how dare they have money <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they were right to do so because it ended up going back up and then dropping back down. But yeah, they were like, it, it's dropped significantly. Yeah, I get that. Times where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the best time to buy this certain thing, but I can't because I don't mm -hmm. have money. <laughs> it's yeah. the worst feeling. One of the worst feelings. Mm hmm. Hmm. What about you, you Cody? Mine's uh well I don't know I really like Theros because the Pokey lands, they're my favorite lands like by far. Oh really? Yeah, I just I just think it looks so cool and I don't know. But I guess one of my favorite cards is um in Magic 2014 they had the Bog Brew cards. I oh yeah, I remember those. Bog... Yeah, that was like my first. Festering Experience. Newton, Bogbrew Witch, or whatever it was. Is that yeah, the one? And, bub and Bubbling Cauldron. And Bubbling Cauldron. Dude, I remember those. And I I made a deck with those and, like, I think Grey Merchant of Asphodel and some other... Dude, like, that's a good so, card. But uh, it was the first deck I ever, like, homebrewed on my own. And I remember kind of doing it at the card shop on the spot. Like, I found Bogbrew Witch and was like, oh, what about those other cards? What does that do? And then... You know, the guy was really patient with me, thankfully, and like, me. let me like showed me some other stuff that might work with it. And oh, cool! Uh, yeah, I made it, and then I kicked my brother's ass like over and over again for like, part of <laughs> nice like, four months, I think, before he was able to. He, that that was a deck that actually made him go and spend all that money on. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, tired of losing, you know. 
Uh, yeah, actually, that's how I how I ended up becoming a spike and getting into CDH. Um, mm. My play group, most of the play group is casual, and uh, at the time we only had five people, five spikes. Um, What's a spike? So I, um, they play to win. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like um. Not play to have fun, play to win. <laughs> That's their fun. Yeah, they're having fun when they're winning. If they're not winning, the game's not good. <laughs> uh, so, like, a spike is, like, the dude in the card shop who has, like, a lot of proxies? Mm, um... Not necessarily. Uh, I know, like, my group, we did definitely proxy, but we were just making sure that it would actually work because what we we were only allowed to proxy for testing and if we knew for sure that we were going to buy this item or buy that card okay. like that was that was the ruling for our play group um but spikes they're they're the whales of magic um they're the ones with they, all the money that are like not, again for the best not necessarily um they probably can't because a lot of us because we're in college so we couldn't afford it but we found the money to get it anyway right so they spent they took money from other places and spent it on magic instead to make sure that they had the best deck Jeez. that yep. for the most part is consistently winning yeah yeah wow yeah like i had a deck uh, that was worth sixteen hundred dollars, mostly because land base. Yeah. And the fact that at the time I was playing enchantments and/or artifacts, so they're just expensive. Yeah. Yep. Actually, that's a lot of the crazy decks. Is like ninety percent of the it is like land base and like mm -hmm. minor cards. I think our play group really struggles with that like we fight really hard we have this huge ban list and it's kind of like there's four of us and if three of you people agree like nah you ain't doing that and we ain't doing that we got like a just a lot of cards that you just if you you're we just don't play with them really because we i don't know we all get frustrated we have like uh like no we're, we're weird we don't like we don't really like proxies like if if we have like someone new to the group that comes in with them, we're like, yeah, you could play, dude, it's fine. But like, it we, the only thing we really hate is like, I guess the spike, I guess that comes along with like the, the deck full of proxies, and then it's of course like all every card that he has proxied is like thousands of dollars, and you're like, it's not really fun. Yeah. As a as like you know like a kind of a group of casuals, and then you have like some dude come in with, if if he actually paid for the cards, it's like ten thousand dollars worth of magic cards, you know, and you're like, I don't. This isn't fun for us, <laughs> you know, like, we mostly play with what we pull, like, we, right. yeah. you know, like, like, we do buy singles, but it's pretty rare when it happens. I mean, I was honestly going to drop money on a Tundra, and a friend was like, don't. <laughs> Your friend should stop you, because there's, like, there's, uh, like, one of the dudes at our card shop, he, he doesn't have a car, but, like, the, one of his decks is $13,000. Jeez, that's so why he like, doesn't have a car. <laughs> so he's yeah, so he's like he's getting rides to the car shop, and then it's like, brother, man, you gotta. I mean, at the time I had a job and everything, so it's just like I had the money, right? Uh, but also because cost of living in Minnesota versus New York is significantly less. Yeah, that's but also fair. Just, they were they were just like, don't do it. It's like. But it's a good card. Like it's it's good. It's not that good. Stop. Save your money. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. But my wallet, it calls to me. Send me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all ready for uh, some more packs? Definitely. So I'm going to open another jump start. Um, this Wait. one. What was that? Oh, I, I'm sorry. I was... I was no, nothing, nothing. Okay. Um, I'm going to open another one. This one says predatory on it. 
Um, I can show you guys through the camera. Oh, wait. So with the jump start, because you said the other one said doctor. You yeah. I thought about it. There's a revitalize in there. It just heals you, the cards in there. Because the revitalize, uh, I'm pretty sure you gain three life. And you might draw a card. Um. Yeah. Basically, I I know that they so what hap they like have cards there so the 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 packs are built in a way that you can put two together or three together and make a playable deck. That's how they're built. If that makes sense. No, but you said that it said doctor on it. Well, revitalize heals you, and then you draw a card. Um, but was that the cleric healed you? Was there any other cards in there that gained life? So That's we have um, moment of heroism, a two cost instant target creature gets plus two plus two and gains the life link until end of turn. Angel yeah. of mercy, five cost when angel of mercy enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Yeah, so it, they they yeah. are packs. Yeah, revitalize you, gain three life, draw a card. So they they all work together well uh, to do something, and you can put them together to make. Make decks that work. Does that make sense? Like, well, but it sounds like because what I'm getting at is it sounds like it's having something to do with what the front card. What yeah, the, like, yeah, exactly. Is. And so I'm assuming that they're they're your, pre. Your predatory cards might either be stuff I don't know, like that deal damage, maybe buff. I don't know. Probably buff because it's it's yeah. mono green. This pack's mono green. Okay. So we have Truffle Snout, a three cost um two two, which says when it is battlefield, uh choose one. Put a plus one plus one counter on Truffle Snout. Um or or you gain three life gain four life. Mm -hmm. Sabretooth Mauler, four cost three three. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Sabretooth Mauler and untap it. So yeah. So it's buffing. Yeah, buffing. Crushing canopy. Uh, Dawn Trader Elk, Maruder's Axe, Thriving Grove, Time to Feed, Ginger Brute, Forest, 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 Fungal Rebirth for Uncommon. It says, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this turn, create two 1-1 one, one green sapperling creature tokens. Right there. Whoa. Come on, just one moment. Give it a sec. <laughs> Come on now. It's, it's trying to focus. There it is. If a creature died this turn, create... Mm, it's a three drop? Yeah. So then we have Somber Walled Stag. Oh my god. Uh, I know, it doesn't want to. When it ETBs. Oh, it fights. Creature you don't control. And how much is that? Oh, uh, drop. Yeah, pretty expensive. Five. Five for four, three. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, it, it fights something, assuming whatever it fights doesn't kill it. Right. Brindle Shoat. <laughs> Two costs, one, one. When it, when it dies, create a 3 3 green bark creature token, which isn't bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Irresistible Prey, a one cost, one mono green sorcery. Target creature must be blocked this turn if able. Draw a card. Let me see if I can get. Come on. Oh, there it is. Mm, nice. Yep. And then, this is a pretty good one. For our rare. We have 
Swag tusk. Swag tusk. Thrag tusk. So it's a, what is it? A five drop, five three. When it ETBs, you gain five. When it lives, you get a three three. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yep. Okay. Wait, did that say common? No, it's a rare. Okay. <laughs> did that say common? I was gonna say, like, that's pretty good for a common. Nani? <laughs> <laughs> Nani? Can't. Can't help it. Um, let me. And now we get to open our Commander Legends pack, which is going to be exciting. The lands in this, in uh, Jumpstar, are actually like minimum dollar a piece. Just the normal lands, which is kind of cool actually worth a lot more than I thought they'd be. Um, do this. Move these over here. Right there. Right there. 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 And now we have our Commander Legends. You guys ready for this? Mm-hmm. What do you think we'll get? Hole breacher. One thing. Oh gosh, I hope not. <laughs> Has to be illegal. Champion of flame. Disgusting. Forceful denial. Haunted cloak. Crimson fleet commodore. Aqueous form. I like that card. Deviant salvager. Mm -hmm. Supernatural stamina. Fire diamond. Squad captain. Wildheart Invoker, Elvish Doomsayer, Workshop Assistant. For our uncommons, we have Daring Saboteur. It's a two cost, two one. Uh, blue, uh, you can pay two, and a blue Daring Saboteur can't be blocked this turn. Whenever Daring Saboteur deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Faith's Fetters, Fork Drop. Uh, enchantment aura that's white enchant permanent when faith's fetters enters the battlefield uh, you gain four life enchanted permanent can't attack or block and it's ac activated abilities can't be activated unless they are mana abilities patron of the valiant five drop four four flying angel uh, white flying angel when patron of valiant of the valiant enters the battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it Oh, we got a mythic. Port Razor. Oh. Hey, that's a good one. Extra attackness. Come on now. There it is. Ah. Why don't you read that out, for, out loud for us, Queenie? Uh, whenever Port Razor deals combat damage to a player, untap each creature you control. After this combat phase, there's an additional combat phase. Uh, Port Razor can attack a player if it has already attacked this turn. Five drop, three generic, two red. Four Pretty four. good. There's a sphinx that lets you take extra turns to extra attacks. Uh, she's legendary, but she can't attack the second time. I know yeah, what you're talking about. Uh, neither I'm pretty, can he. I'm pretty, I'm pretty yeah. sure she's Azorius. Yeah. Uh, we have Siani, Eye of the Storm. If it'll come on now, let me get out of the way. Oh, there we go. Flying whenever it uh, attacks, right? Scry X, where X is the number of attacking creatures with flying, and it has partner. Three, two. Abomination of Lanawar. Lanawar. L4, Vigilance, Menace, 3 cost. Uh, it's power and toughness are each equal to the number of elves you control, plus the number of elf cards in your graveyard. We have a staunch throne guard. 
these these foils are Pringles. Holy cow. Yeah, welcome to Caldheim. Um they're Pringles. Let me, let me see, let me see. We're, oh my gosh. Yeah, they're bad. Um you might wanna get that if you have hard cases, because what is that? One of my Jaces, it was from I'm trying to think what set it was from. Masters. And we got a Prismatic Piper. Yeah, Masters 25 set. I had a Jace the Mind Sculptor from that set. Uh -huh. Um, if you have, if you have a hard case, you might want to stick it in there, because I know, um, depends if, if they may, if they use the bad foiling, they would, uh, curl up, and there was no way you're selling those. Yeah, that's fair. So we got Prismatic Piper, that was a really good pull, though. Port Ranger. Mm -hmm. How much is that? I'm curious. He's not. He's not too expensive, I don't think. You should have, Queenie. You should have been here for the last, uh, the last recording, our last podcast, because I pulled the tiny bones from Jumpstart, and let me tell you, they are not cheap. And as I was trying to put it in the sleeve for the camera, I dropped it, <laughs> and uh, I just about died. It's two dollars seventy four cents. Gotcha. I bait. They made a lot of them. That's the problem. Gotcha. A mythic is a mythic though. It's a pretty good one. Ugh, gross. It's extra attacks for pirates. It's perfect. Yep. Oh no, I was talking about tiny bones. It's gross. Oh yeah, I hate playing against. I'm. <laughs> it's so bad. But you know what? You know what? Tiny bones isn't as bad as Turgrid. Turgrid should be banned. I Turgrid is so annoying. Holy cow! Especially when people just make decks just, just around Turgrid. Yep. His existence is just to get, like, make everyone sacrifice and discard. It's yeah. so annoying. While making your board insane. Yep. Yeah. It's just it like, is terrible. Yeah, I was playing with someone just like they didn't play a lot of creatures. Literally, their only creature was um, Turgrid, for the most part. Jeez. And they just played a whole bunch of sacrifice and discard spells. So, I mean, if they never played... They literally said, if you don't want to have to deal with Turgrid, remove Turgrid. <laughs> interesting. I have, like, a play set of Turgrid. Uh, IRL. What, I ha what do I have? I have a... Uh... I can tell you right now. I have. Here's my black. Let's see. Let's turn back the page. Okay, so I have two normal turgrids, um, regular versions, and then I have. Come on, where are you? They're, out, they're over here in the back. And then I have a regular foil Turgrid, and then a full art Turgrid, non-foil. So, I got all the Turgrids. I'm not gonna use them. <laughs> but, uh, yep. And then we got a small thrill token at the back end of that pack. So kind of to close this out, uh, Queenie, I was curious what your favorite commander deck to play is. Um, hmm. Actually, you know what? It's um, I mean, it's 
it's it's a brown deck when I drop Mycos and Lattice, but um, it's a deck that I drafted from a cube. Oh. Uh, it's it's a Golos deck. I see. Yeah. Do you play it on Cockatrice, or is this an IRL deck that you uh, use? On, co on Cockatrice. Gotcha. I I don't have cards yet until I'm in a better position to rebuy cards. Yeah, that's I'm fair. Probably, I'm probably going to be starting out with, um, because right now, just with funds, I can't get singles. So I'm probably, if I do start back buying magic, I'm going to probably get uh, fat packs. They're not called fat packs anymore. They're uh, booster packs. They're, They're bundles, not. I thought. Bundles, yeah. I remember when, yeah, I've been around for a while. Yeah, I remember they were, when they were fat packs, too. I don't know why they changed it. You said they're called bundles? Mm-hmm. Um, actually, you know what? Let's ask Google why they're not. From someone who has bought one recently, I would know. Ah, uh, ba 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 ba, because the name... There's an ever an explanation for this. It seems like adding one booster and giving it a whole new name is a bit silly. Oh! What? This is why they were called Fat Packs. It was literally called Fat Packs. Oh. Ooh. Uh huh. Did you see it? Yeah, weird. That's cool. That is cool. It was from uh, yeah. At a time, they were literally called fat packs, and then yeah, and some people they feel like it's it's more it makes more sense for them to call it a bundle. When I first saw that picture, I was like, is that fireworks? <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, I still call them fat packs. Just like, I, there's no way I'm calling it a bundle. Yeah. I have spent a most of my life, or most of the life, most of the time that I was playing Magic, because I've been playing for t over 10 years, calling it fat packs. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me now I have to call it something else? Right. <laughs> nah, fam. Um, any closing remarks between the two of you? Oh, right. You know, I never even finished answering the question. Um, oh, you didn't? My apologies. Uh, I guess my favorite deck... Oh, right. Yeah, I did. I lied. It was the Golos deck. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about y'all's? What are y'all's favorite decks you have? So, on the last podcast, we kind of talked about it a little bit. Um... Oh. Mine was uh, my Iroas got a victory commander deck, my Boros heroic enchantment. Um, I love that one a lot, so it's really fun. And yours? Uh... <sighs> Can you okay, Cody? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> moving stuff around. I, uh, Yours was an I, Orzhov. It was white black, wasn't it? Yeah, mine was Orzhov. I have a deck with Lisa that's kind of just like pretty awesome that I like to play. Usually, when I lose, I still kind of have a good time, so it's like a good indicator. Yeah. Um, but I also have my Carter Doom Scourge deck, which my playgroup is lovingly called Second Place because. <laughs> Uh, it's really, really bad at 1v1s, um, yeah. but I can literally force everyone to kill each other, and usually there's <laughs> one guy left with a really good board state that just wipes the floor with me, but it frustrates other people, because it's like, he forces, he literally forces you, he goads everyone, I don't know if that's your, if you're up to date on the, the new stuff. Oh yeah, he, yeah, I know. So he's got goad um, when he enters the battlefield. Um so it's like him and then just a 
variety of ways to make him continuously enter the battlefield uh combined with like a bunch of other cards that you know like there's target enchantments that go to specific creatures and i usually like to put that on you know like my opponent's key pieces to make them attack with them yeah makes sense like so when i said i don't look at spoilers i just don't look at spoilers eventually i see the cards <laughs> <laughs> But it's like kind of like that. Um, I have some really ridiculous card. I have uh, God, huh? <laughs> when I remember the name of this card. Uh, let's see. Like I have invasion plans, which makes each creature block when able. It's got mm. like um, just like I don't know, cool, hilarious stuff in there that just makes it extra funny. I have captive audience. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's one of the few decks that you can run. Oh God, it's a uh, red black, but or it's Rakdos, but it, makes, it speeds up a game like a lot. It halves your health at the start, and you can't gain life. The start of each upkeep, each player loses half their life. Oh geez, uh, so that's harsh. So, yeah, like, I'll play that, and then I'll play my commander so no one can attack me, and then they all have to go around losing half their health. Dang. That's the only that's the only card I really, um, like, usually win. If I get that card, I can play it and then just kind of play around their hilarity and say sorry. You know, like, I have Blood Moon <laughs> in there. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, I have uh. Revel and Riches. So, like, I could play that, make everyone attack each other, and then... It's Havoc Festival, that's what the card's called. Players mm. can't gain life, and at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses half his or her life rounded up. Jeez. So, yeah, like, I'll play that, and then that's, like, the quickest commander game you've ever played, really. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. At least in multiplayer, like, format. Yeah. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I typically always get second place, because there aren't a whole lot of ways to for me to actually like win the game it's more just like hilarity and stupid stuff to just do fun i don't know just to have fun yeah um well very yeah, cool. i i'm working on a new deck right now i kind of really want to do sphinxes i still am on that i'm still on that idea i just like do it man just haven't had time to sit down i i may try to make one in cockatrice later but that kind of depressing for me sometimes do it. Watch out. We'll have to, really... You'll have to build it and then we can play. That'd be fun. Kind of um, test it out and see. I'll get it. I'll get it built probably tonight. I think I'll make a. If I can't, if I can't come up with anything really good, I'll make a meh one. You know. Uh -huh. can... That's fair. All right. Um, Queenie, where can people find you on the internet? I'm on Discord. Well, I have my Twitch. I am meaning to get back into streaming. Uh, and oh, fluff, fluff, fluff. And uh, that can be found at. Can I remember my own? Yeah, so, I mean, I can be found on Twitch. Gotcha. Uh, eventually, I'll get back into streaming, but at twitch.tv uh, backslash O underscore S-O Queenie. Um, and then I'm on Discord. Uh, yeah. I have an interesting tag. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, so, I mean, you'd have to... Um, the tag is on my... It is on my Twitch. You'd have to copy and paste it. Yeah. But yeah. They can do that. And what about you, uh, Dustin? Or not Dustin. Shoot, I keep calling you Sonic. For some reason. It's almost it's like your okay. brothers or, you're almost like brothers or something and sound just a little similar. <laughs> I'm I'm on Twitch. Uh I'm on League same same name. I'm on League of Legends as Pineapple Prime. Um and I'll play with anybody, I don't care. So Very cool. 
thank you guys so much for joining my podcast and hopefully uh, we'll see who's on next week but uh that's always a surprise even for me so <laughs> Uh, thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll catch you guys next time. Yep, I Bye. had fun, man. <laughs>